Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video. I'm super excited because today's video is featuring someone who got a 142 on their LSAT and she is now a 2L and thriving. Um, and I thought it was a really, really great conversation. She shares a lot about Clio, which is a program that she did to help gain admissions into law school. So if you guys are interested in learning more about Carice, about Clio, about how to stand out as an applicant with a lower LSAT score, then keep on watching. My name is Carice. I'm Carice Duru, and um, I'm from Houston, Texas, born and raised. And I live in Vermont now for school, um, go back and forth for breaks, of course. But um, yeah, I'm a 2L at Vermont Law School. Um, started the journey last fall and it's going by so fast. <laughs> um, so yeah. Okay, so I took the LSAT a few times. So I'm just wondering how many times did you take it? And if you don't mind, what were your scores on each of them? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I took it three times. Um, from what I remember, yeah, three times. And the first one I made a 130. Um, I will never forget that. And the second time I made a 139. And then the third time I made a 142. Um, so, I mean, I continued to increase, but it was not like good. <laughs> so. Well, how did you make a decision to apply with, you know, a lower LSAT score um, instead of continuing to study and maybe go for like another retake? Um, so, uh, one of the things that definitely pushed me to like continue to apply even with the score was my like application in its entirety. Um, I felt that like the LSAT was like the weakest link in my app, although it's like super important, you know, but, um, I just thought that I had a really good like application as a whole. So I was like, you know, there's going to be a school out there. I just need one. Yes. You know? Um, and so I was doing research, of course, and, you know, looking at blogs. So you get kind of discouraged just seeing some of that stuff, but I just wanted to apply. Cause I was just like, I mean, I don't need everyone to say yes. I just need one, you know? Um, but in the midst of applying, I was still studying cause I had planned to take it again, you know, just hoping I would still like get the admission. So. <laughs> so what were some of the things that your application stand out more? Was it a personal statement and diversity statement, or was it the things you did in undergrad that you had on your resume? Um, I would say probably like post undergrad, um, post undergrad, I did like a lot more volunteering. Um, I just had more time to like be involved in stuff. Um, and then I was working full time. I worked for five years before or four years before getting into law school. Um, and so I think the maturity of me, like being able to like get some work experience, um, in like the professional world. Um, and then I think for me, not it doesn't work for everyone you know everyone is different but for me i think it helped that like i had a different background that wasn't like um legal you know i didn't like my undergrad my uh undergrad major was like speech pathology like you know and so i think just like the randomness of that in applying helped me because i was able to like just talk about something else um and kind of my strength in that um and what like led me to this point you know um, so I think that helped. And then my diversity statement, I think definitely helped because um, I'm Nigerian. I talked about like the culture um, and also just like my interest in international law as well, just to help like people who are there. Um, so I think that kind of just worked out all together. So. And then I know you did a summer program. Um, so I'm just wondering, how did you find the program? How do you apply to it? And what does it entail? Um, and how did it help you with law school admissions? So kind of like a four part question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so I found out about it through a friend um, who also went through it the year before I did. Um, and it was like a last minute thing. And she actually told me about it when she finished going through it. So I had already, or I'm sorry. Yeah, like when she finished going through it. And so, um, I think she told me like when she got accepted into hers or something like that. But like, I just remember like I missed the deadline for when she told, like I missed that initial deadline. And so um, I had it on my radar, bookmarked on my computer. And I was like, no, next time around, like I'm getting it. Like I'm gonna make sure like the minute they open, you know? Um, and so uh, I found out through her and then um, ended up getting in. So you go through like an interview process and you do two interviews, you do a personal statement, you have to submit your LSAT scores, like it's a whole thing. And then they select like 40 students. Um, you you find out like by April or so, 
I think apps close in March. You find out by the end of April, beginning May, and then you do a two week online like portion. And you're basically like getting intros, you go through like groups, you get to meet everyone, see who all is involved, you know, from where, where they are from. You get little mentors and stuff. You're all like divided. And then you go through like a four week residential portion where then you get to meet everyone. Yeah. And it's like you get like a, a host school. So we were at Southern last year in Louisiana in Baton Rouge. Um, so like room and board, you get your apartment. Everyone stays in the same like apartment complex, get bused over to campus or if you drive. Um, and yeah, you, they just simulate what law school would be like. And so, I mean, we were at school from like 8, 8 we were up at like 8 a.m., class started at 10, breakfast was like at nine, and we were on campus at like 7 p.m. Like, yeah, it was like intense. It was literally like a hazing process. And I feel like law school really isn't like, you can make your own schedule, you know, certain things of that nature. So some things just weren't like reality, but like it really did like help because you're going through like contracts, torts, legal writing, analysis, um, it really like hones in on your writing skills and your testing skills. You get graded like you're in law school, you get lectures. I mean, it's, yeah, you get your books. Um, so yeah, it was it was really, really nice. And is this a program geared towards underrepresented students specifically or can everyone apply? So it is geared towards underrepresented students. Um, Obviously, they're not going to say on there like, you know, like only minority students apply or anything like that. Um, so we did have like non-minority people there. We did. We had a, like two or three. But for the most part, like, you know, you'll see minority students. That's what it's supposed to be geared towards, you know, um, just so like you continue like helping one another, like come into the field type of thing. So I, I like that. It's like, you know, it kind of puts you in the position of like, um, you know, so we paid it forward for you. So like, make sure you do it to the next person. And I think that's like, I love that. Like, I just, I love that it gives that opportunity. Um, and um, yeah, I, yeah. Is, is this a program that you have to pay for it or do you get scholarships for it? How does that work? So you do have to pay for it. Um, they did start a scholarship program for it. I believe it's the Clio Pre-Law Edge Scholarship. Um, but I know the fee is like twelve hundred dollars, like twelve to fifteen hundred, um, if you don't get the scholarship. But you, I think from what I heard, like most people do get it. Like half of the students, I would say, like up to twenty or so, get the scholarship. The other half will have to pay. Um, but the payment includes, I mean, your rent. It includes your folder of like, like all your materials. It includes everything. So, um, yeah, yeah, it includes the whole nine. So it's definitely worth it. <laughs> And then, so that kind of program, the Clio program, how did you use that to help you with your admission? So is this a program you did before you started your application process or did you apply and then you told schools, like I went through this mini law school essentially, did well and yeah, how did that work? Yeah, so there's a couple parts to it. Um, so it is, it's the Clio uh, Pre-Law Summer Institute, Clio PLSI. And there's like two parts to it. So they have like, when you graduate from it, it's the, you'll, you'll either be a Clio fellow or a click fellow. And I was a click fellow. So like the catch is Clio fellows are sort of like how you said, like you'll basically apply to your own schools um, and basically let them know like, hey, I went through this program. And then Clio also gives you a recommendation. So like it helps in that sense. Um, I've heard that there are students in the past who like, were granted admissions because they went through Clio because they are nationally recognized. Um, a lot of schools won't speak on Clio, you know? So it's it's really, I feel like up to like people who went through it to like discuss it. Um, Cause it's just one of those like best kept secrets. But um, so yeah, like it helps with admissions. So you can either go that route or as a click student, um, again, they accept 40. So like 20 of us were click students and click fellows. So we had to have the extra interview and you're all the same. You're all going through the program, except like with the click fellows, the, the catch um, with that is you're going to a school that's assigned to you. You don't get to pick. So they have like partner schools. So they're partnered with Vermont law, Washburn and Kansas, Idaho law. And they had Mitchell Hamlin in Minnesota. I don't believe they're partner schools anymore. So I know of those three for sure. Uh, Washburn, Vermont, and Idaho. And um, yeah, once you finish the six-week program, then you're automatically admitted into one of those schools. 
So you don't have to do anything. Yeah, like as if you, you have to finish like satisfactory, you know, and show that you can do it and go through that rigorous intensive program and then you get your admission. So you would apply to one of the other schools within like July, a couple weeks after like you finish and then you hear from your own school. So Clio kind of like is that bridge and they kind of work that out for you. And then you, you know, it kind of goes from there. And then you're supported throughout your law school career by Clio. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. And then you get a scholarship as well. Oh, you do? Law school? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so it's like yes. acceptance and scholarship if you do well in the program. Oh, right. wow. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's nice. So it's like some people are like, you know, I don't want to go to Vermont or Idaho or whatever, but it's like you get money and you get admission. Like, it's guaranteed. <laughs> yeah, for your dream for three years. It's just like, eh. Just, mm. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> oh, and then if you're comfortable sharing, I just want to know how you've been doing in law school because I really want people to understand that LSAT is not, it doesn't indicate how well of a law, like lawyer you'll be or how great of a law student you'll be either. Um, and I know uh, 142 is, you know, it's considered a low LSAT score, but you can go to law school and do better than people who got like 160s or whatever. So I'm just curious to know how you've been doing in law school and just how do you like it so far um, after doing the Clio program? Yeah, absolutely. Girl, so you hit the nail on the head. The LSAT is no indicator of how you will do in law school. All it teaches you are the skills of like discipline, having a schedule, like the basic stuff you're going to need. I think it helps in that regard. As far as the material on there, you'll never see that again. Like has nothing to do with class. Like I don't, I can't tell you a question from the LSAT that I'm seeing now, like no. <laughs> um, I'm doing really well. Um, I'm involved, I'm secretary of BOLSA, our BOLSA here. Um, I'm a student ambassador. My classes, I like love my classes, interested. Um, I did, I mean, I made A's in classes that like I wasn't even, cause I was trying to do family law. And um, I mean, cram, like all these things, I just never, my mind just couldn't fathom before law school. And now it's like, wow, like I have other interests. I'm like good at this, I'm not good at this. Like it really lets you explore like more than what you think you you thought you knew or whatever, you know, like the LSAT, yeah, it's, it's, it's trash for lack of a better word, <laughs> but, um, you know, I, it's a hurdle. Like we have to do it, you know, we have to take it, but it's, yeah. Once you're in, you're in, you just need like an open door, you know? You literally need one. That's it. Exactly. That I know I'm going somewhere, so I'm done. <laughs> And even like, you know, I know everyone has their goal of like certain schools and definitely shoot for those schools. But I think even plug for my school real quick, Vermont Law, um, you know, I'm not going to sit here and, and say Vermont was my first choice ever when I started the journey. Um, along the way, I found out about them even before I got into Clio and had them on my list. So it's crazy the way God works. But um, you know, I think it's so important to find a school that looks at you holistically and where you're not just a number you don't want a law school like going through the process it's so stressful and you don't want the stress of a school that's gonna look at you as just like another student like at vermont like the support is incredible like they so much care about our success and when i talk to friends who like are at other law schools it's not the same you know so i really sorry i really um just stress that <laughs> And then to end off, do you have any last advice for students with low LSAT scores? Um, just any tips or just motivation for them? Because I know I'm going through the application process right now, and I actually retook the LSAT for the second time this month. And it, it, it is stressful, and it's just, it, it's stressful. So I, as soon as I decided whatever LSAT score I get, I'm applying with, I was just like at peace. <laughs> but I know it's, it's very daunting, and it's like sometimes you have self-doubt and things like that. So I'm just wondering if you have any parting advice for um, you know those out there who have gotten lower LSAT scores. Yes, so um, for sure, just knowing that like you can do it. Um, knowing that you're capable and that um, you wouldn't be applying if you didn't feel like a weight or like a fire in yourself to do so. Like you would not be applying, you know, like if there you have a voice, there's something in you that's saying like, hey, law school is for me and you need to follow that. Um, and not to be discouraged by like the rejections because rejection is a part of life. It's going to happen whether in this journey or like 
going in a job or something, you know, like rejection is just part of life. Um, don't take it personally. It can be really hard to take it personal and totally give up on what you're called to do. But like operate in your purpose, continue to pursue it, be persistent, be disciplined about it and like keep going. Cause like you literally only need one yes. Like <laughs> you need one, <laughs> one. <laughs> so, that's it. So. I feel like that was a good way to end it. I really want to thank you again for agreeing to do this video. I mean, I didn't even really know a lot about the CO program. So to realize that there's a program out there specifically for, well, geared towards underrepresented students where they can get an acceptance and scholarship money, all of that. I think just thank you for sharing that, spreading the word. Basically. For sure. Sure. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will have a link to the Clio program as well as Carice's social media handles in case you have any questions. Um, I, I mean, honestly, I feel like the the biggest takeaway is that LSAT does not define you, okay? The way someone put it to me once was, if you think you're exceptional, you're going to be that wherever you go, okay? Wherever you end up. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.